at this time, I'm going to ask my wife to come forward. And I'm going to ask her to share with us and share with the moms of our faith family here what God has put on her heart today. And again, my wife, I, I can tell you this, she has been a great mother. I was reading Proverbs 31 yesterday. And um, I, mean, I can truly say my wife is a Proverbs 31 girl. Um, there's a lot of times where I can't run our kids all over creation. Think of how many miles we put on our vehicles, and I bet you a lot of that is running kids in other places throughout raising them. I think of the way that um, she takes care of her family, she takes care of me. And I just truly thank God for her and honor her today. So, hon, if you would come and share what God's put on your heart. Good morning, everyone. To say I'm a little nervous is an understatement. Um, I've already been weepy, so I'm probably going to be more weepy. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Um, when I was, when David asked me to share, um, God had been putting different things on my heart for kind of a while, and um, I wasn't quite sure where they were going, what was going to happen with them, and um, He asked me to say a few things and so I was like okay I'll you know find a mom in the Bible and talk about which I was going to talk about Mary which David talked about her today um but I God wouldn't let me do that I had to talk about what was on my heart um which is really difficult because it makes me be vulnerable and I don't like doing that in front of a lot of people it's easy for me to do that in my if group. It's easy for me to do that at women's Bible study. It's not easy for me to do it today, especially with guys in the room, because they don't understand women. So it, <laughs> they just don't. And so it's hard for me to be this way. It's hard for me to put myself out there because of what you might think, what you might not think. But in all reality, this is what I have to do, and I have to be real because that's who I am. I don't know how to be fake. I don't know how to wear the mask. Um, occasionally, a few people who are close to me, when I have the mask on, they know, but and they come to me. Um, but I don't wear it very often because I just can't. I have to be real. I have to let you know that I'm real. I have to let you know that I fail. There's not good decisions I make. I'm not always a good mom. I don't do everything right, never. But um, I love being a mom. Um, I never would have thought growing up, um, it wasn't like I was one of those little girls who could hardly wait to get married and have kids right away, and I wasn't like that. I like to go do things, I like to play sports, I like to be a tomboy. I liked my frilly stuff, but I liked to do that kind of stuff as well. So getting married a year out of high school was not on my, that wasn't in my plan. Um, waiting four and a half years to have Shelby wasn't really in my plan either, but it was in God's plan. And um, my parents uh, moving to Africa after our second year of marriage was not in my plan. Um, my mom and I are extremely close, and um, there's just my brother and myself. So once they all left, I didn't have any family here. Any extent, you know, I had extended family, but there was nothing. Um, and I was craving that. I needed that mom figure in my life because my mom wasn't here. And that so burns in my heart with especially young moms and knowing even though you, you might have your mom here but you might not how important it is for us as moms to be there even as women in general to be there for each other um we can move mountains when we're together but when we're not unified when we're picking at this and picking at that we don't go anywhere and we become dull inside and we become um we become disconnected from the group that God's placed us in. 
I'm kind of off my notes now. Um, uh, but back to that, um, my, my mom was able to come home when we had Shelby, so I was thankful for that. She was home for six weeks. But my dad never saw her until, oh, she was over a year old before he ever saw her in person. And a few years later after that, um, the relationship with my parents became strained for about 13 years. Didn't have too much contact with them. They were back and forth on the mission field. Um, we had left the church that we had grown up in. They didn't approve. There was a lot of dysfunction in our family. They didn't um, show for birthday parties, baptisms, uh, important events, school things. They wouldn't come. And that was something so far off my radar, I never would have expected any of that. But having gone through all of that has made me into the mom that I am today. Um, Dave and I both promised our kids that that type of behavior was not going to happen with them, was not going to happen with their kids. Um, that, and that's one of the reasons why I am so passionate about being involved in their lives because they have had to bear the burden of not having grandparents in their lives, showing up for events. They haven't had that. And to me as a mom, that crushes my heart because they have missed so much of my kids' lives, our kids' lives, and they're the only, they're the only grandkids on my parent, on my side. This is it. That's all that my parents have. And to let little petty things get in the way of seeing them grow up, being part of their lives, it crushes my heart. And I want my kids to know how important they are to me. I would do anything for them. I would move mountains. They're worth my time. They're worth me driving them to and from sporting events, to and from work, even though it gets tiring at times, and I'll probably miss it when I don't have it anymore, but it's worth it because I want them to know that they matter to me. I want them to know without a shadow of a doubt that mom will be there, that mom loves them. Um, one of the parallels that God was showing me between him and moms is our ability to overlook hurt when our kids need us. Um, you know, Dave has talked about many a time so when we forgive, as humans, we don't forgive and forget because God's the only one who can forgive and forget. We don't because we're human. But I feel like one of the glimpses that we have of that holy forgetfulness is when our kids come to, you know, hurt us. What Either it's they don't want to be with us that night or they don't want to hang out with us or they don't want to invite us to this or whatever, little things, stuff like that. But to a mom, that, like, gets to the core of you because you're like, I, you're, you're my son. You're my daughter. I want to be with you. I want to hang with you. I, I want to grow old with you. I want to watch you do all this stuff. So we, those hurts come. But whenever our kids come to us, um, they, they can know that all they have to do is come and say help. And we can be there. It doesn't matter what they've done or how we've been hurt, we forget that hurt because it's our kids coming to us. It's our kids asking for help. And that's the same way it is for God because we're his kids and we've ignored him and we haven't spent time with him and we haven't listened and we've decided to go our own way. But when we run to him and say, Father, help, he is there. He can't help but be there. And that's what being a mom is to me. With my kids, I can overlook those things and have that forgetfulness. Well, yeah, you just said this to me two minutes ago, but all of a sudden you come to me and you want help, and I can be there. I'm there for you. That constant support of a parent. And I believe that that's a bond that God has created between a mom and her kids. It's different between a dad and their, and their kids than it is a mom and their kids. Because we're the ones that are the primary caregiver. We're the ones that are the ones that are with them, driving them here, raising them. You know, yes, you can do that. No, whatever the case may be. That's 
primarily our job is to teach them. And if we don't teach them how to love, if we don't teach them how to stand firm, if we don't teach them how to reach out to the poor or to the lost or to the hurting or to have compassion and kindness, who's going to teach them? No one will because that's our job as a mom. Um, and then we as moms need a lot of support from other women. Um, something that God's been laying on my heart a lot is how to get the group of women that we have in our body together. How do we bridge the distance of um, older ones that don't have kids at home anymore, that are grandparents, that are great grandparents, down to the ones that are still having babies? There's so much that we have to offer each other that... Um, I don't know how to accomplish that. I don't know how to get people included to say, hey, I want to learn from you. There's stuff I don't know. I've been a mom for a long time, but not as long as some of you here. And then there's people below us who are just getting that. They could learn so much from us. And that support to a woman is indescribable. When you know that you have one person that you, or however many people you have, that you can go to and say, Hey, I need help. Sometimes we're ashamed to ask for help, myself included. Good grief, I'm the pastor's wife. I shouldn't have to ask for help from anyone. But how untrue is that? That is so untrue because I need help just as much as the next person does. But people don't look at it as that. They look at it as I have it all together, which I don't. And I don't like saying that, but it's true. That's how it is. And if we can all be that honest with one another and, and be able to feel that connection of going to someone, whether it's someone who's, you know, 20 years older than you or someone who's younger and say, can I pray with you? Can I help with you? What can I do to help support you as a mom? That's so, it's so needed. And it, and it when, when moms have that support of even one person, even if it's your husband, being able to go to him and say, you know what, I need help. And husbands being, okay, what can I do? Instead of maybe, well, gosh, didn't you know I worked 12 hours today? Gosh, don't you know I just got done from driving here, there, and the other place? Moms need that support to be able to do the job that God's given them to do. Um, okay, so getting back to trying to... Uh, bridge the gap, trying to involve us all, I really would like all of you to be praying and saying, okay, God, where do you want to use me in this body that I call my church family? Where can it be? Is it a young mom's group that we've started? Is it leading a ladies' Bible study? Is it having people to my house? How can I get included? How can I include everyone that is so, because as women, we are relational. That's how God made us. We long to connect with people that way. And if we aren't putting ourselves out there, making ourselves vulnerable, being scared, thinking it's going to be hard, I don't want people to do this, I don't want people to know my private thoughts or whatever the case may be, we have to get past that because God's calling us to be a church family. And to be a church family, that means that as women, we are together together that we uplift and we uphold each other in whatever it is that we have going on. Um, okay, so I would like to close with um, a scripture from Proverbs 31, 26. And it's from the, the message. And I love the message because it speaks in everyday words that we use all the time. And what it says is when she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say. And she always says it kindly. So, moms, remember that what you have to say is important to whomever it is, whether it's to your kids, to your husband, when it involves your family. It's okay to stand up and say what you need to say because God says when she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say. So I hope you all have a happy Mother's Day and enjoy your family.